abusive prince, Ernest Augustus, the Duke of Cumberland and King of Hanover, led a life filled with intriguing exploits and captivating stories. Born on the 5th of June 1771 at Buckingham House, he was a spirited fifth son of George III and Queen Charlotte and a younger sibling to the flamboyant George IV. During his formative years, Prince Ernest, along with his brothers Augustus and Adolphus, spent his youth at Kew, where they indulged in an adventurous camaraderie. Their youthful bond was further sealed when they were bestowed the prestigious honour of becoming Knights of the Garter on the 2nd of June 1786. Their thirst for knowledge and exploration led them to the University of Gottingen, where they embarked on an exciting academic journey. However, destiny had a different path laid out for Ernest, one of valour and bravery. He was destined to serve in the military, and in 1790 he donned the uniform of the 9th Hanoverian Hussars as a lieutenant. The battlefield became his canvas, and Ernest's courage shone brightly during the battles against the French in Flanders and the Netherlands. There was even a legendary account of him single-handedly rescuing a French officer and taking him as prisoner of war. Yet such valour came at a price as he suffered severe injuries at the Battle of Tournai in 1794, leaving his face permanently scarred and one eye deprived of sight. Though praised for his bravery, Ernest was known to be a stern and harsh leader to his troops. Despite attaining the esteemed rank of Field Marshal in 1813, he never engaged in active service abroad again. In 1799, a new chapter unfolded in Ernest's life as he was granted the titles of Duke of Cumberland and Teviotdale, along with the honorific title of Earl of Armour. Parliament further recognised his contributions by awarding him a substantial grant of £12,000 every year. Politics ran deep in Ernest's veins, and he was an ardent radical Tory with staunch Protestant beliefs. His opposition to political reform was unwavering and he vehemently resisted Catholic emancipation. When the Duke of Wellington, known for his political acumen, considered support in the act, Ernest skilfully wielded his influence over George IV to dissuade him. The aftermath saw Wellington's government resign, but Ernest's victory was short-lived as he lacked the necessary support to form a government of like-minded radical Tories. The act he opposed was eventually passed in 1829. His appearance, Ernest possessed a striking elegance, standing tall and lean compared to his more corpulent brothers. His features were handsome, although mared by the war's toll, which left one of his eyes disfigured. In later years, he adorned his face with broad, drooping whiskers, masking the scars that he carried from his courageous past. Character-wise, he was a radical force, unafraid to speak his mind and wield influence over others, especially over his brother, George IV. Known to harbour a hint of malice, Ernest had a knack for finding weaknesses and stepping on the metaphorical corns of those around him. His brother William IV once mused, Ernest is not a bad fellow, but if anyone has a corn, he will sure to tread on it. Such was the enigmatic and captivating persona of Prince Ernest Augustus, Duke of Cumberland and King of Hanover, whose life was etched with bravery, politics, intrigue and scandal. An unconventional union. The romantic tale of Ernest, the Duke of Cumberland, took a dramatic turn on the 29th of May, 1815, when he exchanged vows with Princess Frederica. Their love had blossomed over the years, but their union was far from ordinary. Princess Frederica, a niece of Queen Charlotte, had already been married twice, first to Prince Louis of Prussia, and then to Prince Frederick of sons brofel both of whom had tragically passed away. This made her previous marriages a topic of intrigue and gossip within royal circles. To add fuel to the fire, Princess Frederica had been informally engaged to the Duke of Cambridge in 1797. However, fate took a different course as she found herself pregnant with the child of Prince of Songs Brafels and married him instead. 
This complex and unconventional history of Ernest's new wife did not sit well with the Queen, and she refused to acknowledge the new Duchess, displaying her disapproval in a rather blatant manner. The marriage faced public disapproval as well, and the British Parliament, likely influenced by the Queen's sentiments, declined to increase Ernest's allowance. Consequently, the couple had no choice but to reside abroad, primarily in Berlin, where they welcomed their son George on the 27th of May 1819, ascending to the throne of Hanover. Ernest's life took a momentous turn when William IV passed away on the 20th of June 1837, leaving his niece Victoria to ascend to the English throne. However, Hanover's laws dictated that only a male heir could inherit the throne, making Ernest the rightful king of Hanover. He returned to his capital on the 28th of June, assuming the role and quickly settling the sights on reshaping the political landscape. Embracing an autocratic rule, Ernest wielded his power with authority, yet he remained open to rational complaints and grievances, avoiding any potential revolutionary uprisings. Throughout a tumultuous period in Europe, he proved himself a wise and respected ruler, earning the loyalty of his subjects in Hanover, a life marred by scandal. Behind the regal facade, Ernest's life was rife with scandal, shrouded in mysteries and controversy. A dark cloud loomed over him in 1810 when his valet was found dead. Rumours swelled that Ernest may have been involved in the unfortunate incident, but a jury returned a verdict of suicide, leaving the truth buried in shadows. In 1813, he became embroiled in a political storm over a parliamentary election in Weymouth, where he was accused of using his influence to favour the Tories, a move considered inappropriate for a member of the House of Lords. As the years passed, another conflict emerged, this time involving Queen Victoria herself. Ernest claimed certain jewels were rightfully his, as stipulated in Queen Charlotte's will. However, his determined niece refused to hand them over, resulting in a bitter and public dispute that caused considerable embarrassment to the government. In 1843, when Ernest visited England for three months, Queen Victoria made her disapproval evident by inviting him to dinner only once, further fueling the familial feud. Amidst the splendour and grandeur of royalty, Prince Ernest Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, led a life coloured by the unexpected twists of love, politics and controversy. His story resonates as a captivating saga of passion, power and secrets that continue to intrigue and mystify to this day. Prince Ernest's life seemed almost entwined with scandal as he found himself embroiled in one controversy after another, leaving a trail of whispers and rumours in his wake. In 1829, a storm erupted when Lady Lyndhurst made shocking accusations against him. She claimed that Ernest had attempted to assault her, and when she resisted his advances, he brazenly threatened to ruin her and her husband. The scandalous tales spread like wildfire, tarnishing his reputation and casting a shadow over his character. The following year, another scandal unfolded, this time involving Lady Graves. Gossips and whispers of a romantic entanglement between Ernest and Lady Graves reached her estranged husband's ears. In a heart-wrenching twist, Lord Graves wrote a note expressing disbelief in the rumours but tragically took his own life, leaving behind a cloud of tragedy and suspicion. However, the most damning scandal of all was linked to his sister, Princess Sophia. Their unusually close bond sparked wild speculation, with some insinuating that Ernest's affection for her crossed the boundaries of propriety. These rumours reached an alarming crusado, leading to whispers that he might have fathered an illegitimate son that, that Princess Sophia was rumoured to have given birth to in 1800. Though there was little evidence to support these claims, certain passages in her letters hinted at the possibility of inappropriate advances from him. In spite of the controversies that swirled around him, Ernest managed to outlive all of his brothers living a life shrouded in mystery. His final breath left him on the 18th of November 1851 in Hanover. 
His only son, George, who tragically lost his sight due to a childhood accident, succeeded him as ruler of Hanover. Ernest's final resting place was in the mausoleum in Hanover, where he was laid to rest on the 26th of November. Surprisingly, despite being despised in England for his tumultuous personal life, he found favour and popularity among the people of Hanover. So much so that an impressive equestrian statue was erected in his memory, funded entirely by voluntary donations from the adoring Hanoverian public. The life of Prince Ernest Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, was a tapestry woven with scandals, intrigue and emotional turmoil. His legacy remains a controversial one, leaving historians and enthusiasts alike captivated by the complexity of his character and the web of secrets that surrounded him.